Yeah, so I'm Gayatri Chatterjee, you know me, I'm your host and welcome back to my channel. So how have you been? First thing I should be asking, it's COVID, I understand you are really upset and uh, it's a horrible situation altogether for everyone. So stay home, stay safe, that's the first thing and now, okay. Today's video is special because I thought that after talking to numerous people on Instagram, on WhatsApp, Facebook, I realized that some things are lacking in today's society and um, maybe it is still there, maybe it is getting suppressed, I don't know, but uh, I just decided this will be a good thing to do and It'll be refreshing, it'll be different. You'll get to know what it is in a few minutes, in a few seconds actually. Okay, first thing is see me very carefully. I'm wearing glasses. This is how I look. <laughs> okay, and now off glasses. <laughs> um, this is something I'm doing because I'm going to be using headphones so that the audio quality is much better so you'll find me like an alien with these boom <laughs> and it's a jbl i'm showing you it's finally wireless oh my god i was so tired of the wires and the wires were literally getting all messed up and today my dogs are here with me on the so they might appear jumping about <laughs> at times in the video or Rather, you find me jumping about. Okay. This is my third attempt to make this video. And now I'm not going to stop no matter what happens, no matter what. Like, even if the camera falls down, even if the stand falls down, even if the whole world collapses. I am making this bloody video. Sorry for that. Offensive language. Don't use it. If kids are watching this, tell them this is offensive language. This is unparliamentary. Okay, let's begin. So there is a power button on one of the sides. I hope you can see it. And you just got to press it. I'll put up a video for this one also. How to use this headphone. And let's Begin. I hope I'm not looking really creepy. I hope so. I really hope so. I'm not looking creepy, right? Um, no. Let me see for one. Yeah, it's connected. It's connected, thank goodness. Okay. So today I'm going to be reading out some stuff to y'all. Let's start with, um, yeah, the very one and only Sita. Okay. Um, this book, it's Sita. An illustrated retelling of the Ramayana. That was Bella. Okay. By Penguin. It's published by Penguin. And the writer is Mr. Devdat Patanayak. He's also a doctor as far as I know. And well, the thing is, um, these books are... First of all, I happened upon them on the Kolkata Book Fair, which year, I think 2019, yeah, I guess, I'm not sure, 2018 maybe, yeah, yeah, 2018, definitely 2018, yeah, so, um, I happened upon them and I was like, let's buy this because I found certain things which I didn't know and I'm someone who likes to know everything so I want to read it out to you all and it'll be one chapter one video okay since I have got hours and I couldn't find my lens nearby I have to use my specs 
please excuse me so let's start this video finally okay Devdat Patnaik, Sita, an illustrated retelling of the Ramayana. And yes, one more thing. I have got this whiteboard ready with markers. Want to see the markers here? For a very, very specific reason. Can you guess what it is? Well, I've read this book numerous times already. But I'm reading it today because... I want you all to know. And it's not only reading, it's also understanding. There are numerous people you'll see or find. They'll say, I read the Gita numerous times, you know. You don't have to come and teach me anything. But it's not only reading the Gita, it's understanding the Gita. So, after my experiences, I have read the Gita not as a period. Pirit is someone who is in pain. I read it as a seeker. No one told me to read it. I just started off with this book. I started with Mr. Devdat Patnaik book. That's what brought the interest into Gita in my life. So, that's the reason I'm going to be reading out this book to you all and my pens are in my hand with my duster so that you know you'll find lots of things which are super important which you have to keep in mind you know it's a study it's a study altogether it's not just a storybook you have to understand that before we proceed it's a study which you must learn, not mug up. You must imbibe in your life. Okay? So, as I said, no stopping now. Let's start. I read the first cover. Now let's read the Pichwara. <laughs> okay, it says, The chariot stopped far from the city in the middle of the forest. Sita alighted, eager to walk amongst the trees. The charioteer Lakshman remained seated, sensing he had something to say. Sita paused. Lakshman finally spoke, eyes to the ground. Your husband, my elder brother Ram, king of Ayodhya, wants you to know that the streets are full of gossip. Your reputation is in question. The rules are clear. A king's wife should be above all doubt. The scion of the Raghu clan, clan has therefore ordered you to stay away from his person and his palace and his city. You are free to go wherever else you please, but you may not reveal to anyone that you were once Ram's queen. Sita watched Lakshman's nostrils flare. She felt his embarrassment and his rage. She wanted to reach out and reassure him, but she restrained herself. You feel your Ram has abandoned you, his Sita, don't you? She asked gently. But he has not. He cannot. He is God. He abandons no one. And I am the goddess. I cannot be abandoned by anyone. A mystified Lakshman returned to Ayodhya while Sita smiled in the forest and unbound her hair. There are lots of things about unbinding hair in the Hindu mythology and old books. We'll come to that later. Now, starting with the cover, we'll read what's here. And I'm going to read every bit of it. Because while I was reading, I found everything so, so important. So, I think you must know. It says, It is significant that the only character in Hindu mythology, a king at that, to be given the title of Ekam Patni Vrata, devoted to a single wife, is associated with the most unjust act of abandoning her in the forest to protect his family reputation. This seems a deliberate soaring of an uplifting narrative. Ram's refusal to remarry to produce a royal heir adds to the complexity. 
The intention seems to be to provoke thought on notions of virality, property, and self-image. And so mythologist and illustrator Deva Patanai retells the Ramayana, drawing attention to the many oral, visual, and written retellings composed in different times in different places by different poets, each one trying to solve this puzzle in their own way, in their own unique. This book approaches Ram by speculating on Sita, her childhood with her father Janaka, who hosted seeds as mentioned in the Upanishads, her stay in the forest with her husband who had to be a celibate ascetic while she was in the prime of her youth, her interactions with the women of Lanka, recipes she exchanged, emotions they shared, her connection with the earth, her mother, and with the trees, her sisters, her role as a goddess, the untamed Kali, as well as the Demio Gauri, been transforming the stoic prince of Ayodhya into God. Did you notice one thing? It is said that Sita was born from Mother Earth and she went back to Mother Earth. And I'll repeat the sentence. Listen very carefully. It's not exactly a sentence, it's a phrase. Listen to it. Her role as the goddess, the untamed Kali, as well as the demure Gauri, in transforming the stoic prince of Ayodhya into God. Ram wasn't born God. He was turned into God by the goddess herself. As they say, the feminine give birth. She gave birth to a god. She didn't exactly give birth as in biological reproduction. She transformed. Even transforming a person is like giving a person a new life and giving a new life is like birth. So, birth. Now, see that the only word written in this page. <laughs> Let's begin. Mm, there are many other books, but I have these two at hand. I'm going to read these two. I'll, 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 I'll reveal the other book later. And, you know, I have CPTSD. I have um, breathing difficulty and problems in talking at times when I get anxious. I know my YouTube channel is not the place where I get anxious. It's the place I am open. Like, I can do stuff here, but... Recently, I've I've been having difficulty even in singing. I have no idea how much. Oh my god, this video isn't about that. This video is about Sita and helping others. Please bear with me. I want to help. I really want to help. Okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. To all those who believe that the Mahabharata is more realistic and complex than the Ramayana, may they realize that both epics speak of dharma, which means human potential, not righteous conduct. The best of what we can do in continuously changing social contexts, with no guarantees or certainties, as we are being constantly and differently judged by the subject, the object, and innumerable witnesses. In one, the protagonist is a kingmaker who can move around rules, while the other, the protagonist is a king who must uphold rules, howsoever distasteful they may be. Both epics speak of dharma which means human potential, not righteous conduct. The best of what we can do in continuously changing social context. You know, this makes me proud of myself and my father and everyone I know. You know why? At least I'm proud of myself when I'm seeing this. I have been the best daughter throughout to my mother 
who has lost the right to be my mother anymore to my father who is the best and a loving sister to my little canine brothers <laughs> brothers sons whatever no sorry <laughs> it's bella and buddy so ah uh, i wish i could use the term siblings um but i think canines are any day better than humans so i guess you got the main message contents so the first thing is the author's note what shiva told shakti this video will have only what shiva told shakti because i believe that every bit of our indian mythology has something to learn and you must ponder upon it not rush through it so this video will have only what shiva told shakti the next video will have a few ramayana beacons across history okay what shiva told shakti there is an image i'm going to show it to you okay that's enough with the image the image is not the only thing we want okay let's begin shakti who is goddess asks shiva who is god to narrate a tale that will comfort all in turbulent times shiva narrates the ramayana the story of sita and ram the story pours out in different ways in different tongues different words different nuances and different emotions sometimes it is poetry sometimes prose and sometimes just a gesture sometimes characters emerge transform and then disappear in a blink it tells of plants that talk and animals that think gods who fail and demons who triumph heroic villains and villainous heroes villainous heroes sages and hunters victims and seducers time twists and space unfolds as the narration proceeds a curious crow called kakabhushandi overhears this narration and shares what he can remember with narada the traveling sage who loves to gossip and exchange ideas between heaven and earth narada narrates what he recollects to valmiki who turns the story into a song and teaches it to the twins love and kush Love and Kush sing it before the king of Ayodhya not realizing that he is the protagonist of the tale and their father Ram does not recognize his sons either and finds it hard to believe that the song the song they sing so beautifully is all about him the Ram they describe is so perfect the Sita he remembers is even better but the song is incomplete there is more to the story the song of love and kush is purva ramayana the early section It describes Ram as Ekabani, he whose arrows always strike the target. Ekavachani, he who always keeps his word. Ekapatni, he who is devoted to a single wife. He is Maryada, Purushottam, supreme upholder of rules. Maryada. is a term which probably most of you all know because it's a hindi term prob probably sanskrit um you know lots of words are like hindi is from sanskrit and many other languages are from sanskrit so and purushottam uttam purush uttam let's write this down i think it will be useful sorry buddy is it becoming a ulta oh hell don't worry i'm going to um do something about it i'm using a selfie camera please forgive me 
The man who is the best in upholding rules or in better words as written here is where is it yeah Mariada Purushottam supreme upholder of rules okay so Understood? Mariada Purushottam Purush Uttam Rules Mariada Mariada me rahi <laughs> Okay Next The detail continues into Uttar Uttara Ramayana the latter, uh, latter section uh, with the seventh chapter describing the separation of Sita and Ram the fight between father and sons, the reconciliation ending with her disappearing into the earth and with him walking into the river Sarayu never to rise again. So where does the Ramayana actually end with the happy sixth or the unhappy seventh chapter? Neither says the sage. Vyasa, he who collected and classified the hymns of the Vedas, he informs us that after shedding his body that was Ram, Vishnu ascends to Vaikuntha, his celestial abode on the ocean of milk and then returns with a new body that of Krishna, who is very different from Ram. Just notice one thing. This name is not only for um, this video but in it's something you must know that's why I'm saying it once again Vyasa is the one who collected and classified the hymns of the Vedas and I'll get you more details on this later I have another book on it I'll just read it out to you later okay but this name is important, so I'm writing, okay? By the way, he just collected and classified. He's not the original person who wrote it. You know, in talking in these terms. Oh my god, my handwriting is becoming just like my thumbs. I guess we should use a different color now. Blue! I don't know how much will be visible. Um, it's all twisted. No problem. I'll put a link in the description box with the pictures of the whiteboard. Okay. Hopefully that will be helpful or rather I can just divert the camera later. That's later. Let's continue. How many pages are there? Oh, it's not much. We can do it. Actually, you know, it's a lot to ponder upon. It's not just one tiny thing. So, mm. Neither king nor faithful to a single wife, Krishna is a cowherd and charity a loving we reveal as Mark okay revealed as Makhanchor, one who steals butter, 
चित्ता चोर वंस हु स्टील हार्ट्स ओ हो चित्ता चोर एंड रन अ चोर वन हु रन्स अवे फ्रॉम बैटल एंड लिव्स टू फाइट अनदर डे इट्स not really that funny in in the sense at times you have probably heard the quote in which they say if you take 10 steps back today you might be able to take 5 steps tomorrow but the ones who don't take that 10 steps back might not end up surviving another day so at times taking steps back is not bad got it so we got a few names makkan chor chitta chor li ran rana chor he is leela purushottam the supreme game changer we got a new name with purushottam supreme is this leela I must admit these blue pens are the worst they are literally not visible I'm going to buy only black from the next time Just let this one finish off Okay His story is told in the Mahabharata that makes the Mahabharata an extension of the Ramayana That's the reason I started with Sita Does the Mahabharata then mark the end of the story that begins as the Ramayana? Not quite. In the chronicles known as Puranas, we are informed that after Krishna, Vishnu takes many more forms before descending as Kalki, who rides a horse, brandishes a sword, very much like an invading plunderer, and heralds Pralaya in the, the end of society as we know it. Kalki yug has already started, baby. Yo. Yeah, Kalki is now. Is pra pralaya then the end of Ramayana? No, for just when the sea is about to rise and submerge all the lands, Vishnu takes the form of a small fish and begs humanity to save him from bigger fish. The man who responds to his cries becomes Manu, the founder of a new social order, for he demonstrates the uniquely human potential to help the helpless, defying nature's law that favors the strong. Vishnu then turns into a turtle, helps churn Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, out of the ocean of milk. He then turns into a boar and raises the earth from the under the sea upon which humans can establish society. This is when Brahma conducts the ritual of yagna. With fire, he domesticates nature and establishes culture. He declares himself creator and master. But Brahma is creator. is uh, but brahma is creator only of culture not nature culture may be his daughter but nature is his mother nature is the mother of brahma nature created brahma brahma created culture Okay. Uh, where is it? Culture may be his daughter, but nature is his mother. Culture is domesticated Gauri, but nature is the sovereign Kali. Both are forms of Shakti, the goddess. Brahma ignores Kali and exerts his authority over Gauri. A father does what a father is supposed to do. The goddess resists, but when Brahma persists, an annoyed Shiva wrenches off the creator's head. Shiva mocks Brahma for seeking value through culture. He proposes the path of tapasya, meditation, contemplation that ignites inner fire, tapa, to burn all fears. And hence, the desire for domination and dominion Brahma does not understand. He declares Shiva, the hermit, to be the destroyer. Vishnu intervenes. He realizes the value of both Brahma's yagna and Shiva's tapasya. He recognizes the fear in Brahma that makes him shun Kali and control Gauri. He recognizes the wisdom of Shiva that enables him to outgrow all fear. It is to bring the two together that he descends from his heavenly abode, Vaikuntha, taking various forms, the avatars. 
As Vamana and Parashurama, he supports the Yagna. As Ram and Krishna, he questions the Yagna. As Buddha and Kalki, he withdraws from the Yagna. He also coaxes Shiva to open his eyes that are always shut in Tapasya, to engage with culture, marry Brahma's daughter, father children, transform into a householder and see the world from the other point's view. The, this Vishnu does again and again in era after era from pralaya to pralaya in a cycle of life that knows neither beginning nor end. Well, here I wanted to say something. Did you notice that after saying Kalki Yuga, the author went back to the, sorry, not the, Vishnu becoming a small fish, then boar, the entire story, right? And it is said that it started from Kalki Yuga, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going, and now it's back in Kalki. Back in Kalki, Kalki has just started. According to some people, Kalki has just started. According to some, Kalki has started a long time back and we are just nearing the end and blah, blah, blah. I don't know, but yes, I do believe that Kalki Yuga is here. You know, because of the description of Kalki Yuga, if you search on the internet, what is Kalki Yuga? I'm going to make a video on this also later on because there are things to explain, things to, you know, actually point out. It's not only to explain, it's to point out. So you can search and you understand a uh, bit of Kalki Yuga. And if you compare it to today's society, you'll be able to see the exact resemblance. Okay, continuing. Oh, one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. So it's basically a cycle, a never ending cycle, a cycle which has no end, no beginning. Go all the way here, here. Oh my God, today I thought I'm going to make a chemistry video, but <laughs> I'm making flow charts about because this is more important yes any day i'm going to do this anyway i actually wanted to join some sort of you know monastery or something like that because uh, my life is going it's still it's tough it's still is tough but um a point came when i just couldn't take it anymore so i was searching for all that where could i go to find peace where no one would disturb me. Yeah, you know what CPDS patients do. I'm not going to name it in this video. I'm not going to name it in any of them. I'm not strong enough yet. But this happened with me. And anyway, let's take red now. Okay. Hmm, no. Uh, in the external turbulence of his household, only the Ramayana gives Shiva reprieve. For in every cosmic cycle, Sita and Ram are always at peace in the palace and in the forest, neither is overawed by culture nor intimidated by nature. Tapasya makes them wise, Yagna enables them to convey love. Together they establish dharma, the best a human can do, in continuously changing context despite being judged differently by different people whose view of the same situation is very different is very different thus the ramayana is a segment of a vast cyclic tale one piece of a complex jigsaw puzzle events in the tale are a consequence of the past and in the cause and the cause of the future it cannot be seen in isolation at least not in a hindu context to do so is to see the stars and miss the sky Further, the Ramayana is not a single text or even multiple texts. It is a belief, a tradition, a subjective truth, a thought materialized, ritualized and celebrated through narrations, songs, dances, sculptures, plays, paintings, puppet, puppets across hundreds of locations over hundreds of years. So, uh, I want 
wanted to say something here and that is actually there are numerous conspiracy theories about this uh, Ramayana Mahabharata that these may have been true may have not been true and but a fact remains that wherever these you know statues or idols are written in these books not not this book specifically i mean the big fat vedas and ramayana gita wherever it is written that the location suppose this peak and you'll find a mold there with eyes and nose and mouth it has actually been found i don't know about all but i've heard numerous numerous sightings have been found so it's very possible that all of this is true ah i i mean the actual book not just a retelling or this is a very good writing like he has made it really user friendly and very understandable i've got another book i'm showing it to you one second um i brought it with me today but i didn't want to go into it because it's way more complex and way more difficult it's written by sri aurobindo it's essays on the gita and believe me reading each line of it is super hard because <sighs> it's not me yawning it's breathlessness um this book is like even though it will weigh probably a kilo it has tons of weight just tons of knowledge each word has been written carefully after a lot of thought i'm not going to go into it today no absolutely not i need to be stronger for that So we were continuing with Sita, Sita Rani. <laughs> तो सीता के साथ चलते हैं हम लोग है कि सीता सीता इज एवरी दस रिमाइंड I have an idea. Let's sing after this video. यार कपड़े नहीं बदलने यही कपड़े पहनूंगी आपको बस सहना है मुझे हाँ आई लव यू आई लाइक इट फिर भी यू नो अब इतना कोविड नाइन्टीन कोविड नाइन्टीन चल रहा है इसके बीच में बार बार कपड़े बदलना इट्स इम्पॉसिबल अच्छा नहीं लगता ना चलो Oh my god i found a lovely thing what makes a ram katha i'm sitting uh i i what makes a ram katha ram leela ram akyan ram charita Ram Kirti or Ram Kavya, were venerable is its ability to uplift the spirits despite or even because of the disturbing aspects of the deity. Um, I'm really sorry for the constant interruption. I haven't been able to study for six months now. I I can't read. I um I I I can't read, but the reading takes a toll on me. That's the basic thing. That's the reason I haven't been able to read. Studies haven't been able to do it. So I've been increasing in music. with y'all learning more beauty hacks 
even can't read my story books come on even movies are triggering me these days I'll just read one important line which is at the end of the chapter, which is very important. You should know. Within infinite myths lies an eternal truth. Who sees it all? Varuna has but a thousand eyes. Indra, a hundred. You and I, only two. Within infinite myths lies an eternal truth. Who sees it all? Varuna has but a thousand eyes. You and I, only two. With that, I bid you adieu. Take care of yourself. Stay home as much as possible and stay safe. Song up next! <laughs>